Okay, so uh, my name is David Lei-Wei Li. Uh, I added David when I came to the United States. And uh, I did my living as an English professor, I guess uh, uh, <laughs> using my second language to earn a living in the United States. That is something that I've never thought about, but it so happened. And uh, uh, as a child, you know, I was very interested in drawing, painting, and so forth. And I grew up in a period in China, which is called the Cultural Revolution, uh, when uh, academic studies are not really taken seriously. So I have uh, plenty of leisure time to do what I want, which is uh, painting, drawing, and so forth. And I guess since then, my uh, personal and professional interests are related to images and words. And uh, you can even say that uh, I'm nothing but images and <laughs> words. And uh, uh, since you know, I started with the painting and drawing, well, when I uh, got to the States in entering into a doctoral program in American literature, the stress is huge, the uh, workload is heavy, and I do not have enough time to, uh, uh, to practice, especially you know, painting, you have to go uh, brush stroke by brush stroke. So as a consequence, I uh, devote more time, especially uh, summer in the teaching and uh, seminar are no longer with me. So uh, I uh, do uh, uh, more of a photography, even though you know, I still do some painting. And if you guys can see you know, uh, in that particular panel, I've got uh, two paintings about the Chinese water town. And you know, one is in oil, which was more representative of my impressionistic period. And uh, you can see the brush stroke and the use of the paint, you know, uh, largely in that uh, French tradition. And the top one is getting more abstract, which was the kind of uh, orientation I was moving toward, but it is a wa watercolor. But, uh, you know, the theme is the same, the treatment is different, uh, primarily to sort of, you know, uh, uh, evoke the kind of, you know, uh, a water town atmosphere of uh, southern China in the area that is very close to uh, Shanghai, which was my hometown. Since then, photography has been my uh, uh, primary artistic preoccupation. And, uh, you know, along the wall, you know, from that side where the clock is, uh, you can see that there are also different styles. You can see uh, kind of a tourist uh, scenic shot of Ragusa, which is uh, a town in Sicily where I was invited to give a talk, combine business with uh, personal uh, pleasure. And the top one is a kind of, you know, uh, five uh, uh, little pictures in the mini-series, which was actually taken at uh, a uh, construction site in winter uh, where everything's frozen, and I discovered the bubbles, and I put some, you know, pebbles nearby and uh, dry leaves to uh, give an abstract representation, largely in the figure of a human head and other things. So uh, that is more or less a stage when I photography, when my photography is getting more and more uh, abstract. And uh, uh, moving along to uh, the left of me is a series uh, I did in Tibet, which is around uh, 2014 or so. And uh, uh, that series, you know, has a particular theme that uh, I uh, discovered, you know, on site. Uh, which is uh, how, you know, the uh, Buddhist spirituality is actually interwoven into Tibetan, Tibetan uh, everyday life. So you'll see most of the shots are what photographers will call, you know, a documentary, you know, a street photography. So all the uh, pictures in that series, which only has four, you know, uh, right on the wall, uh, are taken, you know, uh, on site, you know, uh, uh, without any kind of staging. And uh, the same thing happens with my uh, sort of composition, which is, uh, you know, uh, very tight. I tend to have very tight composition and I try to eliminate a lot of noise, which, which is, so, say, you know, the, uh, the objects and, and things which are distracting from the primary composition, especially the human figure in there. 
So I guess you know, this attention to a certain kind of a geometric uh, cleanliness is more or less a kind of a stylic, uh, stylistic feature of mine. Another my perennial you know, interest, those are reflections of, uh, of objects on land, but you know, uh, through water. And these are shot in marinas, where you have the mass, uh, masts of the ship, you know, which uh, offer the kind of a reflection you see. But depending on, you know, how the wind is, you know, uh, the re reflection changes. And then, you know, uh, depending on the speed of the wave, you know, that changes the shape too. So those are the abstractions of water reflection that uh, I uh, call aquatic calligraphy because uh, there's a type of Chinese calligraphy is called a walking style. Okay, it's not a square Chinese style. It, and this is more like Xing Su and Cao Su. It's kind of walking and running style. So there's fluidity to it. And uh, largely it shows the constant change, you know, of, uh, of our planet and uh, of our human life, uh, which is uh, forever fascinating. <laughs> Further along the walls there and the behind me are uh, shots of a series that I took in the Chinese uh, southern coastal area, which is uh, most famous for its kelp or seaweed production, which is a Chinese favorite, you know, staple, environmentally sound, you know, it's a kind of a plant food you know, from the water. The series, a kind of a thematic treatment of uh, how nature and culture, which to me is agriculture here, can harmoniously kind of exist. So the scale is, uh, is industrial, but somehow uh, I try to contrast the, 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 the tiny human figure in that, you know, uh, with the scale of uh, nature, even though that's nature, you know, managed by, by human beings, you know, the contrast of a tiny, you know, human figure with the grand scale of nature is more or less the sort of a tradition of uh, Chinese landscape painting. You have, you, you see those pagodas and pavilions, which are tiny against the huge mountainscapes and so forth. So it's a kind of aesthetics, which uh, is reflective of, uh, uh, a, a philosophy of uh, human and uh, nature relationship in which human is a tiny part of that, you know, immense nature to which we owe our existence. And that is very different from the kind of aesthetics, you know, and uh, European perspectivism, which uh, puts, you know, nature under a human grid. Okay, so you map the universe, you conquer the universe, and that of course, is in entirely related uh, to uh, the sort of a European scale of uh, uh, colonization and colonialism and so forth, okay? Because you need to have the mapping of the globe according to the human rationality and uh, geometric uh, principles, and then you chart. Before that, you do not know. After that, you can use that knowledge to chart political geography, which brings in the sort of imperialist, you know, adventures and so on and so forth. Right, and uh, you know, to a certain extent, you know, the uh, the uh, 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 farmers of uh, of the sea, you know, uh, apply that same principle because the geometric figures, you know, reflect that kind of a, a principle of rationality and reason. Okay, which is now universal. Right, the Enlightenment legacy has become universal, and uh, I wa also want to capture that kind of a human order. Okay, the human ordering of nature in the kind of industrial production of what we regard as the kind of, you know, harmonious, you know, uh, e ecologically sound and uh, environmentally sustainable, you know, uh, farming. Continuing the series from Shap, Fujian province, uh, the emphasis here, you know, uh, beyond the colorful crab uh, crab nets and the sort of, you know, figure of the uh, uh, fishermen, you know, at the back, uh, are the sort of uh, industrial boats, you know. <laughs> Aesthetically speaking, what I do with those, those behind me are the vertical lines, again, which are like Chinese brush strokes, but the, in terms of the scale, the uh, uh, bamboos, in addition to the uh, vertical scale, they also form certain kind of a, a wavy pattern. Okay, like an S, 
like a loop, you know, like a wave itself, even though in a kind of vertical way. So it's almost like the uh, wave, you know, in the American Southwest, which is lava flow, but nevertheless, in terms of the shape, they share similarities, so that gives those pictures a kind of uh, aesthetic, you know, consistency. Now, uh, moving behind, you know, above me are the two very different kind of uh, photography, which are, again, you know, sort of perennial series I always do in the fall when the leaf falls. And the dark background here is actually Willamette, water, uh, Willamette River. I happened to be there and saw the uh, leaves floating on that. And then in this particular one, and this one actually you probably can see is the reflection of the pylon. You know, this is the sort of boat launch. So you have the pylon and you have the board. You, people can go there and casting their you know, fishing line and so forth. So, so you have a very vague type of you know, suggestion of that reflection. So the highlight is on the leaves. Highlight is on the leaves. And unlike you know, those series, I desaturate. Uh, with those, I uh, uh, saturate more and I darken, darken to eliminate the shadows and the other kind of lights to have the, you might call that kind of a Rembrandt effect. You know, like the Rembrandt spotlight, you know, on uh, the portraiture. Human portraiture, you have uh, the highlight in, in this particular leaf, which has a color contrast, the cold and warm color contrast. But the background itself is largely dark and to create kind of a somber effect. And, uh, and most of the photographs, even though they are re represented in the way, are more or less presented as kind of a puzzle. So this is my sort of a approach to photography uh, in the sense that I want to present the photo as a kind of visual puzzle. And the whole point is, I guess, you know, to arrest the audience eyeballs. You know, we always uh, talk about how uh, speedy uh, our social life has become and how the sort of rotation in TV and the film that the, uh, uh, the per minute picture frames, like uh, the usual frame is uh, uh, one second, 24 pictures to have the kind of motion, right, in the film, you know, motion picture, okay? I do still photography, but nevertheless, you know, uh, I want the, I want my images uh, to have that kind of effect of uh, pausing the audience attention, okay? I do not want to have your eyes move very fast. I want to, uh, to have your eyeballs pause to create a kind of moment of uh, contemplation and meditation. Okay, to, to focus on the leaves. Okay, those are those just fallen leaves and dirty, you know, shriveled, you know, uh, not very colorful. But nevertheless, you know, I want people to pause uh, in that contemplative moment of thinking, uh, you actually feel the kind of uh, a tranquility that uh, is very difficult to find in our uh, fast-moving mov life. Okay. Thank you very much to uh, uh, hear this, if you get a chance to see it. And thank you very much to Westling Public Library uh, for accepting my proposal, and I esp uh, especially appreciate the kind of uh, uh, work they do uh, to show art, you know, uh, to the public instead of uh, putting the museum or gallery for sale. So there's a kind of a Banksy effect, you know, uh, of uh, public art, you know, uh, uh, to serve uh, the uh, uh, interest uh, of, uh, of all the citizens of uh, West Ling or anywhere nearby. And now the, uh, uh, the uh, 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 a gallery talk that I've just given is also online, you know, that will be uh, good for public cir circulation, you know, to enhance the cultural life of everybody who want to have the access to it. So thank you, thank you, thank you.